Tonight from Kansas City, it's the Red Sox and Royals with the weather cooperating big time. We're set for game one after a rain out here last night. The Red Sox looking to keep their high powered offense rolling against the defending world champions. Hi everybody, welcome to Kauffman Stadium. Great to have you with us. I'm Dave O'Brien tonight, joined by the Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. Garen Austin will be with us in just a couple of moments. And Eck, on that homestand, the Red Sox went six and one. They averaged 10 runs a game up and down the lineup getting contributions. Nobody contributed more than Jackie Bradley Jr. Incredible. You know, you know what happened last year in August. I said, is he ever going to duplicate that again? Mm -hmm. That's how good he was last August. That's how good he is right now. You talk about player of the week. I mean, this guy's done everything in the week. Singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. You see the curveball that he just wallayed three times. You see the slam off Axford. You're going to see a, 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 a three-run dinger off a left-handed pitcher. Time to talk a little pitching because Rick Porcello is six and one coming into play tonight. That's right, Obi. He's been off to a strong start, as you mentioned, six and one with a 3.11 ERA. Porcello has thrown six consecutive quality starts, and he ranks among American League leaders with six wins. Here's John Farrell on Porcello making his eighth start tonight. The biggest thing is he's done, I think, for the majority of the season, is that when he's elevated pitches by design, he's been able to get back to the bottom part of the strike zone. Uh, and and that is a telltale sign of someone who's in control of their delivery uh, and a clear cut plan of execution. Royals and Red Sox coming up. Uh, being out of being drafted, um, the Braves really encouraged me to be in the bullpen. Uh, they told me it would be a faster track to the big leagues. Oh, and, yeah. You know, hearing that, that's, you know, yeah. that's what you want to do. You want to get to the big leagues. And, um, you know, they gave me that opportunity. Did you, did you always have this gas? 
this kind of gas? Is I really saw the velocity jump uh, when I went to college, and then from college to obviously being in the bullpen, uh, throwing with new balls. Uh, How about the story about somebody snatched something on your foot? Yeah, when I was in high school, I had a I had a foot injury that uh, that I made it through going into college and got to sit out, watch guys play for a little bit. But uh, in that in that time, I built up a lot of strength, uh, threw off my knees. I think they've. I've written a few stories about that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise that to. But you think that had something to do with? It, it may have. Um, I think it, it definitely helped me learn how to, you know, control my upper body, not to sling the ball. I mean, when you're throwing off your knees, you really can't, you can't sling the ball too well. Right. Um, so I kind of learned a, bit, a little bit about mechanics and a little bit of strength as well. You know, watching you all this time, watching you for a long, long time, uh, just you know, with all the punch outs, which, you know, I would give anything to have all those punch outs and have that kind of gas. But I'm a big body language guy, I, you know, and I don't know how you feel about this. Maybe it just sort of happens because you've got to make them think the game is over, you know, and sometimes you really don't feel all that great. You know, so you're not going to feel good every time you go out there, but there's something about carrying yourself the right way, and that leads into how you do it. And how did that sort of happen? You know, you don't see too many guys going like this. <laughs> how did that uh, well, take on its... Uh, you know, I agree with the body language. Body language is so big. Um, you don't want guys to know if you have it that day or if you don't. You don't. You don't want your warm-up pitches. Um, you know, you don't want the a buzzy team seeing you frustrated yeah. at pitches you're throwing or, or noticing that you're not kind of be as aggressive or uh, you don't have your best stuff that day. Um, you know that you there's more times than not you're going to go out there and you're not going to have your best stuff so having the mentality i mean i still have to get through the inning if, if i'm have my best stuff that day or if i don't uh so i just got to keep that same mentality that you know i'm going to be aggressive and try to get you out um it's not going to work every time but uh, i think if you have that mentality to, to attack guys and my stuff may not be as good today but i feel like i can still get them out you get nervous i, I get excited I think there's, That's nice to say. there's, a, there's, there's scenarios that I get put in where I'm like, okay, well, I need a, I need a little bit more here, um, you know, but how, 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 do, how am I going to get that without getting too excited in the moment? Um, how do I just focus one pitch at a time? Um, and that's just over, over the last few years of being put in those spots, um, just slowing the game down because it doesn't start till I throw the pitch. As we're speaking right now, mm -hmm. there hasn't been too many clubs. I know I've been with this on a streak like this the last two or three weeks. This is. I mean, I know it's fun, but this is like scary. Isn't oh, it? absolutely. I mean, sitting in the bullpen, you just have to sit and take it in. You know, it's yeah. and the, the, the way the offense has been swinging the bat. Yeah. Uh, it's never been done in history. So to yeah. be able to watch that um, yeah. with my own eyes, and it, didn't, it doesn't seem like there's a situation where our team's out of it. It seems like in Boston, every night, um, everybody's expecting us to win by 10. And uh, it seems like it's been that way uh, so far to start this year. I know you gotta just you gotta do it the next game. It's always the next game. So when you give it up, and you don't give it up very often. This year he gave up the home run on opening day. He ran into Davis ran into a fastball. Mm -hmm. What? How do you deal with failure? Well, it's part of this game. Um, you want to take. I don't. I'm not gonna say I don't get frustrated because if you're an athlete and you fail and you don't get frustrated, um, you know you're. You're okay with failure. I think when I when I'm unsuccessful, I get more frustrated. That I let the team down than personal uh, personally. And I feel like they went out there and they played most of the game. And my job is to come in for one inning and to get three outs or four outs, and you know everybody can go ha go home happy, or we can play extra innings and try to win the game. Um, and when they put so much into that, and I go out there and I fail, I think that that's the most frustrating part for me. Yeah, you know, for me it was like. Uh, every day I might have to pitch. Mm -hmm. It just starts getting to you after a while. You know, the best it of them. It feels like Groundhog's Day sometimes. It's like, whew. And then, <laughs> then you didn't even pitch, and it's like, whew. Mm -hmm. You almost did, yeah. right? I mean, th that's the grinding part of it. I know physically is important, too, but the mental side of this thing, it's hard to stay sharp every day. You've got to be ready mm -hmm. every day. And uh, there's no, I never could laugh. I, I, I look back now, and I want to tell you this. You gotta enjoy the moment. Oh, I, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, I think there's, uh, you know, as much time as we spend together in the bullpen, we're we're gonna joke, we're gonna have good times. There's gonna be stories to tell, 
uh, and just have fun, you know, and doing it. And as soon as the phone rings, it's, it's time out. It's time to, yeah. you know, get in the game mode, time to put your game face on. And Some of those guys aren't nervous because they know they're not going to pitch. <laughs> Sometimes, You know what I'm yeah. saying? It bothers me, you know, no yucking it up. You've had such a great career so far. I know you don't want to look, go ahead, you know, because that's a major superstition. But, you know, you got you to gotta wonder with, uh, if you could stay healthy, what you could do in this game. I mean, I'm telling you, the Hall of Fame is, is, is a chance. Well, that's nothing I'm thinking about. I know, but no, it's I'm, nice to have somebody tell you that, isn't it? It is at times, yeah. yeah. But I'm just showing up and putting my work in. Um, as many years as God has blessed me to play this game, because we never, we don't know if, what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after that, but just showing up every day. And I feel like if I give, give what I can give today and tomorrow and the next day and keep going, um, you know, story will kind of write itself. Well, fascinating stuff between those two who know how to close out a major league win. Greg Kimbrell and our man Dennis Eckersley. First pitch is right around the corner from beautiful Kauffman Stadium in KC. supplying award-winning all-wheel drive vehicles throughout New England by DraftKings, the official one-day fantasy baseball partner of your Boston Red Sox. By the 2017 Kia Sportage, visit anykiadealers.com to learn more. By Digital Federal Credit Union, see what DCU can save you. And by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Turned into a spectacular night here. The rain is gone. Of course, we're going to have a doubleheader tomorrow. Starting in the afternoon, another in the evening. Red Sox lineup now brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Toyota's website for deals, Mookie Betts, to be followed by Dustin Pedroia and Xander Bogarts. The DH, David Ortiz, then Hanley Ramirez, Travis Shaw, Jackie Bradley. Christian Vasquez does the catching, and it's Brock Holt at left and batting ninth tonight. The Royals starting pitcher brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. That's the right-hander, Jordano Ventura, 3-2, and two, an ERA of 4.62. And he's been walking a lot of guys. 28 walks in 37 innings. And we're just about set for the first pitch as Mookie Betts gets in. Hitting 262 with six home runs. And the first one in there for a strike. This guy throws hard. And I mean really hard. 98 with the first one. And this is the guy they drop a Pedro Martinez on. The same kind of 
build and the same kind of big fastball. And he idolized him growing up. There's 97. Those 28 walks really jump out at you. 37 innings. The 0 2 is down and away. Okay, with a seven game hitting streak coming into Kansas City. Had the go ahead triple in the seventh inning on Sunday. And he pokes that one foul. Okay, has tied a Red Sox record with an RBI in seven games in a row as a leadoff man. The 1 2 pitch. Breaking ball hammered, but caught on the line by Hosmer. At first base, one man out. The Royals defense brought to you by DraftKings. Around the infield, you see Cutforth taking the place of Mustakis, Escobar at short, Infante at second, and Hosmer, Golden Glover at first. The outfield from left to right, Golden Glover, Gordon in left, Kane soon to be a Golden Glover in left center field, Orlando in right behind the plate, Golden Glover, Perez catching Ventura. And Dustin Pedroia hitting 299, and he will take ball one. Six homers, 20 runs batted in, one of three Red Sox in the American League's top 10 in runs scored, along with Betts and Bogarts. A strike. You see that big fastball, average velocity last year, 95.6 miles an hour, fourth best among American League. And National League starters. Also has that power curve and a pretty good changeup. Last year he started off the year getting in trouble. Remember, he had a bunch of started a bunch of fights. Very emotional pitcher. And a fearless guy, so he certainly has some Pedro in him. The 2 1. That missed. 99 on the gun. He's altered his delivery a bit this week, they say, to stay over the rubber a bit longer. And hoping that that mechanical alteration will help him throw more strikes. And that is just on the corner. But how does that translate typically? Well, I'll tell you what, when you throw the ball that hard, it's hard to wait. You know, keep your weight back and, and sort of gather everything. Ned Yost was talking about it, saying he's walked a bunch of guys, but he's just been missing. Three and two on Pedroia. Bogart's on deck. And that's in his strike three. And Dustin Pedroia is going to argue here with Bill Miller. He didn't think so. He punches out. And there you go right there. There's a pitcher could have went either way for Ventura. He gets it coming back a little bit. I think it's off the plate, but it's a pitcher's pitch, and Pedroia doesn't like it. Umpires are brought to you by ToyotaCertified.com. That is Bill Miller, the crew chief. Pat Holberg at first, Brian Knight at second, Todd Titchener, the umpire at third base. And here's Xander Bogarts as he looks at a strike. It'll get me over breaking ball right there, but he's got a changeup that he goes to, too. They're just hoping that this kid could be their ace because they really don't have an ace. They had Cueto last year, they got late in the season, but they don't have a clear cut ace. A one busted bat pop up, loop toward right, backpedaling out Hosmer, and he'll make the play. To retire the side. So fast first. The Red Sox haven't had many of those. No score in inning number one.
Eagles lineup brought to you by your New England Chevy dealers. Celsius Escobar is short. Lorenzo Kane at center. Eric Hosmer, the first baseman. Then it's Kendrys Morales, Alex Gordon, and Salvador Perez. Cuthbert at third and Fonte at second. And Orlando, the right fielder, up against Rick Porcello, who is 6 and 1. ERA at 3.11 coming in. Red Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Audi dealers. He left them out at Fenway to a standing ovation and a strong effort in a win over Oakland. His last time out, six and two thirds, six hits, three runs, and a strike. Rick's pitching as good as he's pitched in his career. You talk about having that monkey off of his back that was on him all last year. Drifting inside for a ball on Escobar, a 264 hitter. He did have four hits on Sunday against Atlanta. They've been a very up and down team coming in. That one popped up on the right side into foul territory. Here's Hanley Ramirez and makes the play. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They're third in the American League with 17 airs and 38 games. You talk about third to first, Shaw third, Bogart at short. Pedroia at second, Hanley Ramirez at first. Around the outfield, Holt, Bradley Jr., Mookie Betts in right behind the plate, Vasquez catching Porcello. We're available this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP presented by ToyotaCertified.com. Search for your factory back Toyota certified used vehicle right now. That'll send up Lorenzo Kane, 274 with five home runs and a nine game hitting streak. Last night rained out here in Kansas City. So we had a chance to hunt down some pretty good Kansas City barbecue. And our producer Kevin Cedargren ate his weight in ribs, <laughs> which was astonishing. Well, he hadn't eaten in a day, didn't he say? <laughs> he hadn't eaten in 24 hours. I don't know how he does it. And he goes about a buck 65, I think. <laughs> a 1 1 in the dirt. They were delicious, Eck. You know, I don't do that either. I, I don't. I can't remember the last time I had barbecue because you just don't. But because you're here, you got to do it. And for a guy who doesn't do it, you did it. I did it, and I had a stomachache all night. <laughs> Inside, three balls and one strike. I am proud to report I did not, and <laughs> I ate more baby back ribs than I've ever eaten in my life. The biggest slap I've ever seen. I can't lose this big, and uh, ate every bit of it. Yes, you did. And I'm proud of it. Probably shouldn't be at my age. The 3 1 and on the corner. Ooh. Kane was off to first. Pedroia. Pedroia thought the pitch on him was a ball. This ball right here. This is outside. Definitely outside. So Kane. a sizable plate. Yes. Outside corner. 3 2. Hammered foul. This was the same umpire that Rick Porcello returned. To have behind the plate when he came off the DL last August, he went seven shutout innings and, and tossed a five hitter. You think he remembers that? I mean, most pitchers remember when they've had good games, but especially that one because he was trying to come back. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, he had to. 3 2 ground ball and a nice snag by Shaw to his left. Two down. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Benjamin Moore. And I mean, all the clouds have gone away. It's the official paint. Of the Boston Red Sox. It says partly cloudy, but nothing but sunshine right now at 60 degrees. Beautiful. It's been so depressing since we've been here. I, I would have played, I would have given anything to play last night. Just start the game. Well, you know, the Red Sox wanted to as Hosmer gets in, but I'm not so sure the Royals were that eager to play. They had played 13 innings the day before, they wore out their bullpen, they used nine guys, and they knew how the Red Sox were swinging the bats. Yeah, there's a reason. But then again, they didn't want to play a doubleheader either. I mean, nobody does. Right, but right. they were in a situation to call the game, and they did. Osmer with numbers against Porcello, 9 for 26. That's 346 with two home runs. He's the only guy in this lineup that has been swinging the bat all year long. Kane started to get hot a few days ago, hit three home runs in New York. But that's been about it. 1-1 one, one pitch. 
Well, he makes good contact. He doesn't walk very much. That makes him a prototypical Kansas City Royal. Not a whole lot of power. Doesn't hit 20 home runs. He's capable of hitting 20 home runs. This is a tough ballpark to go deep. Wind blowing in a little bit. That's inside. And runs the count to three and one. Porcello pitching to him like he knows he wears him out a little bit. Osmer 336 with six home runs. And downstairs for ball four. Thank you, right. That was a very cautious at bat as Porcello walks him. He threw him everything he had. I guess he didn't throw him a curveball, but he threw him the changeup, two seamer, tried to go inside. You know, the way Purcell has been walking anybody this year, it's only the 11th walk on the season. Kendry's Morales off to a very cool start as their designated hitter after a big year last season, hitting 201 with five home runs. Although Sunday he belted a walk off two run homer in extra innings to beat Atlanta. And that one downstairs and scooped up by Vasquez. The runner will hold at first base. And speaking of Atlanta, if you missed it, Freddie Gonzalez, their manager, has been fired. So he is out with the Braves. There's a story out there that he received a message either from the Braves or from the airline that he was about to fly on in the middle of their series against the Pirates. And that's how he realized he had been dismissed by the Braves. Well, that's classy. Brown ball right into the ship. Bogarts will feed Shaw at second base to retire the side. So we're scoreless after one in Kansas City. Top half of the second inning Red Sox in Kansas City for three a doubleheader tomorrow. Which by the way will be Stephen Wright in game one. And David Price in the nightcap. For the Red Sox head on back to Boston. So a very quick road trip. First one to Big Poppy is down low for ball one. What a day Big Poppy had on Saturday huh. I mm -hmm. mean that was incredible. A single away from the cycle. Crushed three balls. 20th career walk off hit and did not play on Sunday. But really, he's been vintage David Ortiz these last 22 games, hitting 341, seven homers, 11 doubles, and 23 runs batted in. That's in there for a strike. Sooner or later, somebody's not going to pitch to him. I could not believe they pitched to him. He had two strikes on him. Maybe that sort of 
the reason why that uh, Hinch let the pitcher pitch to him, right? I got it. Felice, think, I, I mean, he threw him a changeup. He hit it. Right. Fouled out of play, but did they discuss fastball or changeup? This is earlier. Yes. The David Ortiz going away tour has hit Kansas City. He got a portrait. He got a chair, and he got barbecue sauce. Of course. <laughs> Makes all the sense here at KC. Knock foul again. Last trip into Kansas City for David. And he's facing a rotation with an ERA over seven the last 11 games. 2 2. Toward the shift. Infante off balance, throwing and got him. So one man out and Hanley Ramirez next. Well that took a long time to turn that huh? I mean my goodness. How many how many hops does this take to get out there and he's in short right field one two three four hops still throws him out by a step and a half two step three steps. <laughs> Hanley will check into three nineteen with four homers and a seven game hitting streak. Red Sox knocking the A's and the Astros all over Fenway the previous seven games scoring 73 runs. They go six and one on the homestand. And you know shutting them down in the first inning is a feat by any pitcher right now the way they've been scoring in the first inning. And frankly the Red Sox played a sloppy series against Houston I thought that was a gift you think about it the last game on Sunday the ball that dropped between the outfielders. There was that Red Sox made some errors made some base running mistakes that they kind of got away with in that series. That wasn't true in the Oakland series where they were just about perfect but because they gave up an 8 4 lead. That's right. Swing and a miss. Andy Ramirez down on strike second strikeout for Ventura. Hanley goes to chase in that break ball 0 2 he saw some gas low a little change up then a curveball over the top misses it badly. Ventura faced the Red Sox just one time last year and he beat them six to three. One run in six innings. When he's on he is very very tough and here's Travis Shaw. But the base is empty. No score in the second. And a strike. He didn't throw that ball where he wanted to change up right down the middle. Bounce that one. Travis was 0 for 5 on Sunday to snap his six game hitting streak. But he enjoyed an excellent homestand nonetheless. 11 for 27 with nine RBIs. He's loved homestands his whole career, huh? He's hitting close to 400 at home. Something crazy. And that's why it was a bit of a stunner to see him go 0 for 5 at Fenway. And Tura trying to make it. The first six men retired to begin his night. That one hit toward the hole for a base hit. So the Red Sox have their first base runner this evening here in Kansas City. I'll tell you what, these shifts will change if he keeps doing this. This is just a weak ground ball to the shortstop position. Finds its way into left field. No big deal. Didn't hit it all that hard. Beautiful thing. So that'll send up the hottest hitter around in Jackie Bradley who just won the American League Player of the Week. He has hit safely in 21 consecutive games a major league high this season. What a home stand he had 15 for 34 and 15 RBIs. Oh, you throw him a breaking ball he'll take you deep you throw him a fastball he'll hit a bullet all over the field. Shot first with two down. Again I talked to Jackie the other day down at the clubhouse about you know does it seem like the baseball is you know the size of a beach ball to you I mean what's different and he seemed to say well it's just confidence I'm coming into my own the kind of hitter I thought I could be he didn't say that you know the baseball looked three times that size you see some hitters in a hot streak say that yeah you know but he's not feeling for it. he's not afraid to swing and miss you know he's not afraid to punch out and he gets a good pitch to hit he's not missing it. 
Ventura's to one. Has a shot drilled toward left. Gordon on the move. That's going to sail over his head onto the warning track. Here comes Shaw pounding in the third. Butterfield's waving him in. Here's the throw home. They won't get him. It pops out of the middle of Perez, and the Red Sox are on the board all the way down to third. Jackie Bradley, another hit for him. That is 22 in a row. You talk about using the whole field. My goodness, you talked about curveballs he hits out of the ballpark. Well, looks what he does with this ball. This high changeup, I think, sloppy changeup, waits on it, hits it in no man's land, one hops the left field wall. This play is going to take a while. You see Gordon gets it in. I thought they'd have a play at the plate with Shaw, but he sort of double pumps Escobar, not even close. Jackie goes to third. So this is updated now hitting 410 in a 22 game hitting streak and brings up Vasquez. Jackie down to third. Give him a double and he takes third on the throw. And the Red Sox have now scored in the first or second inning in 12 consecutive games. I mean that is incredible the way he's swinging the bat. I mean unbelievable. It really is foul line to foul line. And the 0 1. You know that was a up that pitch was up and had nothing on it and he hits it the other way. I mean that's a pitch you'd think he'd want to pull but he just. The slugging percentage during the hit streak is 768. So scores of extra base hits as well. Vasquez hitting 250 with a home run. Red Sox ahead one to nothing here in the second inning. In there for strike three. Caught him looking. Came back with a breaking ball to freeze him. But the Red Sox are on the board. Another hit for JBJ. Seats to the biggest games. We'll check out the official Red Sox ticket resale marketplace. That's RedSoxReplay.com, the best place for season ticket holders to sell their tickets when they can't make it to the game. Jackie Bradley Jr. has extended his hitting streak in his very first at bat, which he seems to do often during this streak. Now 22 yeah, straight. Get it over with, right? And relax. Meanwhile, maybe get three for four going forward. So on to the bottom half of the second inning. One nothing Sox, and the batter will be Alex Gordon. Off to a soft start, hitting just 222 with four home runs. He found his way back to Kansas City after the World Series. I think a lot of people were looking for him to go somewhere else. They brought him back, re signed him to a big deal, $72 million. He is a fast out as Porcello disposes of him 
for his first K tonight. Boy, that look easy or what? 0293 by a moment. Look at this. See ya. Balls in the glove. Porcello, you talk about sinker baller. Sinker baller, are you kidding me? He's been punching guys out all year long with that high fastball. And the other stuff. Yes. And he's got this mantra working. You go talk to him, and he's like, execute pitches, execute. They all do, don't they? they sound like robots. Salvador Perez here hitting 234, five homers, 20 runs batted in. Their outstanding catcher. Baseball's hardest working catcher. He's caught over 3,500 innings the last three years, the most in baseball. Got jammed there. Boy, he runs that ball in there. That's a, that's a great sign. Look at the size of Perez. He is a monster. 6'3, 240. And himself a really fine World Series. And the 0 2. He would not chase. It's that little two seamer to come back. Perez, boy, they, they tore up that contract they gave him, didn't they? It was a nothing contract that he signed a long time ago. Curveball and a high fly into left field. Easy play for Brock Holt. Two down. Chesler Cuthbert will step in next, their third baseman. Mustakas is on the DL. Mike Mustakas, an all star last year, drove in 82 runs. So they're giving some youngsters an opportunity to play, but it's not going that well because they're 18 and 19 right now. They are such an average team right now, but you know, this division is a lot tougher, I think, the Central than it was. But they can hang around and uh, get hot like a lot of teams do. But they miss Mustakas. I mean, he's a good player. He was swinging the bat good. Cuthbert, right hand hitter from Nicaragua, made his major league debut last year. And he knocks that one foul out of play, hitting just 217 in 19 games, and at the moment, 222. So there they sit at 18 and 19. Pitching's been troublesome for them lately. The staff ERA, 5.13. The last dozen games that one in there for a strike and I don't trust those White Sox. I don't I mean they're 24 and 4 and I know they've got two good guys. You have obviously sale and Quintana and Quintana. Yeah. I just don't trust it. You don't No, I don't you don't like that lineup. Uh, -uh. but yeah we'll see Red Sox went in there and won the series taking two out of three mm. just missed you saw Vasquez frame it there an extra beat or if he gets this pitch he's going to be tough and it just sort of. Barely misses the outside corner. 2 2 to Cuthbert. High chop, softly hit toward third base. Going to let it roll, and it strikes the bag of fair ball. So that's going to be a base hit for Cuthbert. And yeah, really, Shaw had no choice there. What an ugly hit. But at the same time, it was an ugly breaking ball that he hit. Sloppy breaking ball. Had hit, hit me all over. It was too high to even get a hit on, right? End of the bat, you're like, oh. He almost can't even get upset because it was such a bad pitch. But obviously a lucky piece of hit. Are you tell me you wouldn't have gotten upset. Well I could I get upset up here you know <laughs> I probably upset down there but looking at that I knew right. that wasn't a good pitch nothing good is going to come out of it. I meant as a pitcher when you were throwing I mean when you gave up a hit like that. You I didn't want to ever give up a hit I know it's easy for me to say that yeah. you know I could deal with it now. But it was an ugly pitch wasn't it. Oh. Not even a strike. No. Here's Infante, the veteran second baseman, hitting just 236. A lot of low batting averages and power numbers with this Kansas City club. Time granted. Royals playing in back to back World Series. They lost to San Francisco in seven games in 2014, won the World Championship in five over the Mets last year. Folks here in Kansas City love these Royals. They've been turning out too. They've been averaging over 34,000 a game. Well, that was last year when every, they voted everybody for the All Star game, remember? Including Infante, who was having a horrible year for him. I felt bad for him because, you know, he knew he wasn't an All Star the way he was playing. In there for strike three at 92 miles an hour. So he strikes out two in the inning. One nothing Red Sox after two.
Game one and the third inning coming up here from Kansas City. Dennis Eckersley, Dave O'Brien, Garen Austin with you here from Kauffman Stadium. And it's Brock Holt to lead things off against Giordano Ventura. Brock hitting ninth for the first time this season, scuffling with a bat at 260 at the moment. He was three for 19 on the homestand. So he was one Red Sox hitter who had a tough time on the homestand. Maybe the only one as he floats that one down the line foul. I mean, you can't. <laughs> You couldn't say anything about anybody. Everybody contributed. You talk about Hannigan, right? He was one of the guys got three RBIs the last game on Sunday. Actually got four. Four RBIs. Three hits, yeah. That last one was something else, the yeah, one that sure. fell in. Makes you think, you know, what's going on here? I know. It's in the stars, man. And Brock thrown out by Joe West after protesting a third strike on Sunday, and he cuts and misses for strike three. He was thrown out at supersonic speed I thought. I mean I don't think he swore at him. He might have swore but I don't think he said it. I think uh, somebody said you have to say the magic words to you. And I don't think he did. I think Joe was ready to pull the trigger. You're right. I mean Mookie bets to hit here and we look at the ejection. We listened to it and the so called magic word never came out of his mouth. But he did turn toward Joe and I think West probably thought well that's aimed at me whatever it is. Yeah I think he said darn it. And then he thought he said it to him. It was a little stronger than that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I but mean. But shy of the magic word. Right. Or words. And it was a quick ejection. Mookie is 0 for 1. To deep short and under the glove of Escobar for a base hit. So now 1 for 2. You see, Mookie here stays back on this changeup, down and in, down middle, really. Pulls it in the hole. You got to pull that. It says pull me all over it. Sends up Dustin Pedroia, who was struck out looking on eight game hitting streak for Mookie Betts. Pedroia upset after being called out on that third strike. As he turned and argued a bit with Bill Miller. Low for ball one. Not a lot of people run on Ventura. You think a guy that throws so hard, he doesn't take that long to deliver. And you know, Perez behind the plate is one of the best throw, throwing catchers in the league, throwing out about 50 percent. He has 11 caught stealings already this season. As that one drifted inside. But you think the Red Sox are this great running team, but they're 30 out of 32, which is pretty incredible. And they've actually stolen more bases than Kansas City. I think back to you know watching the Royals of the 80s and the Red Sox of that same time they were the Red Sox <laughs> and this Royal team you know, back in the day ran hog wild over everybody. Oh totally Willie Wilson that's the name that pops out. He'd steal about 80 bags a year. And that turf. I'll tell you I, I saw Willie Wilson hit it inside the park home run just a line drive to left field. Man could he fly here's the two one. Fouled back to the screen. It's a far more athletic Red Sox team than the old days, certainly. Didn't want to come here back then. That, that's a long time ago. Matthew, you're talking the 70s. George Brett 70s, yeah. 80s, whatever. Now those teams beat up on the Red Sox. Artificial turf here back in the day. It's a ballpark that has held up remarkably well. It really has. It's a good thing they put the grass in. Just like in St. Louis. Remember they had the turf there too and they finally turned it into oh. you know, a new stadium now. But the old one they finally put grass in it. Summertime forget about oh it. Oh my. Chop toward the middle. Escobar with it. Taps the bag for one and a double play. So that retires the side. That's all for the Red Sox. On top one nothing.
86 Red Sox in the 39th game in 86 the Red Sox beat the Twins three to two Sammy Stewart Joe Sambito and Bob Stanley combined for four scoreless innings out of the pen to secure that win. Steve Lyons got a couple more hits every time I see this Lyons gets a couple hits. Well he won the batting title that year. <laughs> I mean for crying out loud. Really? I'm telling you. I mean, we found that part of the season where he was just cooking. It was about a week and a half. <laughs> Paulo Orlando leading things off here. Red Sox in the lead one to nothing. And he rips that one toward the alley. That's right between Bradley and Betts and all the way to the fence. Orlando runs well. Big strides. He's heading into third and the throw won't get him. Well, he can get it. Put him up and pick him up and put him down. And as soon as that ball was hitting the gap you knew he was going to get three. Something high. Don't tell me it was a high changeup, but he smokes this ball into the gap. It rolls for days. This is kind of a triples ballpark anyway, when you have the kind of speed that Orlando has, easy triple for him. And got the third standing up. So the batter will be El Cid's Escobar who popped up to first base to open up the ball game for Kansas City. Red Sox with a one nothing lead at the moment. He loves to swing at the first pitch this guy. He takes here for ball one. And like many of the Royals he walks infrequently just 26 times all last year. Guy with on base percentage leadoff hitter under 300. The 1 0 pitch right through it. DraftKings is the official one day fantasy baseball partner of the Red Sox. Experience the thrill of playing on DraftKings now. Play free daily using the promo code Nesson at DraftKings.com. Boy, he had a pitch to hit right there. He had a hole in his bat. That ball is right down the middle. Lorenzo Kane on deck, nobody out. A ball. Sometimes Porcello will overthrow his his two seamer. You want that two seamer to be like 89, 90 miles an hour. Sometimes he throws it just too hard. The two one. That's ball three. This is a hitter. He's had a lot of success success with six for 37, a 176 batting average. He's throwing pitches like he's going to swing the bat, and he's not swinging. Here's the 3 1. Line toward right, slicing, and a foul ball. Well, don't miss WB Mason X Rennings live right after the game. TC Jim Rice, Steve Lyons will break it down. You'll hear from Rick Porcello and John Farrell, whatever, whenever, wherever, who but W.B. Mason. So to count three and two, Porcello trying to put him away. Ripped but foul. Once again, a pitch. I don't, this is an ugly pitch. Whatever it was, was. I don't know if that's a changeup or not. I'm not getting a read on anything here. I didn't see the the temperature on that pitch, but it was ugly. Look at this ball. Changeup, three-two changeup, chest high. Weird call, isn't it? He's lucky. I chop on the infield. Runner trying to score. Bogarts will go to first base and get him. And Orlando touches home plate, and that ties the game at one. Pretty tough to get out of this inning with guys that just make contact, especially Escobar. He throws him a pretty good pitch right there, but everybody's playing back, giving up the run, take the out, 1-1 one, one game. So the base is empty with one gone, and the batter will be Lorenzo Kane. He's 0 for 1 with a ground ball to third. He is five for 14 lifetime against Rick Porcello. And a guy.
guy who was instrumental in the Royals championship run last year he finished third in the American League MVP balloting. Scored 101 runs he hit 307. MLB TV premium is everything you've come to expect and more watch every out of market game of all 30 teams in true high definition on over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB TV for details. The one one. Fly toward right that's going to go up into the stands and make it one and two. Lorenzo Kane, you know he took off last year like he said third in the voting for MVP. I. I was thinking this guy is just going to go off, get a golden glove, and this and that. And there's a kid that didn't start playing until what, late in high school, right? That's correct. Didn't find a game until quite late. Pretty well hit, backing up bets. But Mookie's there to turn and make the grab. And there are two down. Hosmer next. Red Sox will have due up come the fourth inning Bogarts, Ortiz, and Ramirez. Sox right now at 10 and 4 in the month of May, tied with the Cubs for the best record in the major leagues this month. And again, a twin bill tomorrow. As the breaking ball is inside on Hosmer, he took ball four in the first inning. One Royal who is swinging a good bat, 336. Oh. Deep right center. Bradley back. Turning. Out of here. Home run number seven for Hosmer, who is on fire right now. I can hear the sound of that bat from up here. I dropped my head right as soon as he hit it. Beautiful swing by Hosmer. He sort of gotten Porcello's number. Porcello hasn't given up a home run in quite some time. You see, change up? I don't know, but he lifted this thing. He knew it did go way out, though. I mean, just barely got out. He's now 10 for 27 against Porcello with four home runs. Morales socks that one down the line, and Holt will give chase, but into foul territory. So Porcello's given up a couple shots in this inning. The triple, now the home run, also some noisy strikes, some well struck line drive fouls. And now he's fallen behind two to one as that one is waved at and missed. Sometimes he features that change up a little too often. See this curveball down. Morales is having trouble hitting left handed, only hitting 151 coming in, hitting left handed. Chopper right there to Hanley Ramirez and he goes to the bag for the final out but a rough frame for Porcello as he gives up a big fly and a triple.
as we go to the fourth inning. And Xander Bogarts tried to hold up, and a first base umpire Holberg says he went. So it's a swing and a miss for strike one. Bogarts, Ortiz, and Ramirez up against Giordano Ventura, the 24 year old from the Dominican Republic. Bogarts 0 for 1. And a topper, the cut up by Cuthbert, and a high throw, and he gets him at first base. Red Sox season ticket holders experience the best seats, price, and benefits Fenway has to offer. For information on becoming a season ticket holder, please visit RedSox.com slash season tickets or call 877 Red Sox 9 today. David Ortiz 0 for 1. He is grounded out to second. His last 12 games here at Kauffman Stadium, he's hit five home runs. That's a dribbler. Third baseman, plenty of time to get him, and two fast outs. Tuesday, May 24th, David Ortiz canvas night at Fenway. The first 15,000 receive a David Ortiz commemorative canvas print. That's courtesy of Enios. For your tickets, call 877 Red Sox 9. That's going to be one of the ugliest outs by David Ortiz, huh? We've been hearing nothing but loud sounds coming off his bat. And then he finally just nubs one to third base. It did not make a sound. <laughs> didn't make a sound at all. He's due for one of those. Two away. And Ramirez all for one with a strikeout. Let's see if he takes a pitch. Otherwise, Ventura is going to be in a dugout in about two minutes. Hanley has reached base. In his last 22 games via a hit a walk or a hit by a pitch. The 0 1 up the middle past the bag and a base hit. They didn't scald it but he'll take the hit he's one for two. A little high change up he stays back on. The play has got to be made by Ventura not that easy play to make but he right back at him so he wants it down the ball's middle. Doesn't make the play up the middle base hit. Hanley catches a break. The Red Sox with their fourth hit, an eight game hitting streak for Hanley Ramirez, who was three for five on Sunday. Travis Shaw has one of those hits, a base hit. And there's a slicer in the left field. Gordon started in and now played on a bounce. So Travis Shaw's two for two and Red Sox have runners at first and second for Jackie Bradley. Jackie has already run his hitting streak to 22 in a row. How's he hit that ball the other way sort of carves it over there. Hard, that fastball was brought and he just looking the other way. Goes 0 for five and now he's two for two. He just hasn't gone away huh? I mean to think about what you thought of Shaw before this season started. He is a solid player. He's killing right handers. He's he hitting is. around 370 against righties. So Does two on with two out. And Jackie Bradley has doubled in a run. Jackie, the American League Player of the Week. He gets a watch, by the way, for that honor. And that's a strike. During the hitting streak, he's driven in 27 runs in the 22 games. Red Sox trailing two to one. Ball inside. He just airs you out with a 98 underneath your armpits. Ventura had an up and down season last year, went 13 and 8, an ERA of 4.08. He had, a great, he had a great second half. Second half, right, he was right. tremendous. He went nine and two after the All Star game. He would lose Game Three of the World Series to the Mets. Gave up five earned in three and a third. The two one, ground ball behind the back, fair ball. Osmer takes it, and that will retire the side. So the Red Sox, despite the two hits, do not score. Two to one, Kansas City.
Boston's trusted source for Red Sox tickets has the best seats at the lowest prices with a 200% guarantee. Treat yourself or someone special by visiting aceticket.com or call 1 800 My Seats. Bottom of the fourth inning, Dennis Eckersley, Dave O'Brien with it, and Alex Gordon in the box. It's 2 1 Royals. Orcello trying to bounce back. He was roughed up last inning, a leadoff triple, and also a home run. And he fell behind. Gordon struck out first time up. Lifetime Gordon has really been tough on the Red Sox. 347 his career average against Boston. Up the middle, but there's Xander Bogarts. And let's go to Garrett Austin. Hey, thanks, OB. Well, a bit of a setback today for Eduardo Rodriguez, who will not make his next start on Thursday in Pawtucket due to soreness in his knee. John Farrell said that Rodriguez had a full workout today with Dr. Asnes in Boston and that he is unfortunately experiencing soreness. And they said, although this is a bit of a setback, they don't feel like they need to go back to zero. And guys, Farrell said that Joe Kelly came out of his start in Pawtucket in good shape, and he is still the leading candidate to start on Saturday. All right, Garrett, thank you very much. So good news for Joe Kelly, who's been throwing the ball very well. As Perez swats at that one and comes up empty and with that knee. Yeah, really. I mean, when you think about it, you didn't think it was a big deal. And here we are, what, middle of May. Now another setback. Hopefully it'll work out, but you're still looking at another couple of weeks easy. Yeah, anyway. But uh, Kelly, obviously, it's assumed that he's going to start, what, Saturday? Leaning that way. Yeah. No announcement yet, but he's uh, looking like the guy. Against the Cleveland Indians back at Fenway. It's a very short trip. Red Sox only going to Kansas City. Going to wind up playing baseball on only two days. Tonight and then the twin bill tomorrow. It's going to seem like a long trip tomorrow night. You ain't lying, brother. Crack bad liner into the outfield for a base hit. Kind of a seeing eye single there for Salvador Perez, who's now one for two. Get a little crunch bat here and it finds its way in the hole. Gets enough on it. The ball sinking back into him. Probably caught it on the label. Just fought it off. Found its way into left field. Now the youngster Cuthbert who had an infield single his first time up. They called him up on the 7th of May when Moustakis went down. They brought him up from Triple A. He was hitting 333 at the time. And ran in for ball one. Kansas City won 95 games last year. Many predicted the same success this year, despite the loss of Johnny Cueto and Ben Zobrist. So far, they have struggled to get rolling. 2 0. Porcello is just not as sharp as we've seen him. He's only given up two runs, but kind of missing here and there. Not unusual. The way he'd been throwing, you know, we get used to him throwing the ball so well. He's falling behind Cuthbert here. And Luke File out of play. Porcello has not allowed more than six hits in any of his five starts to date. He has given a four so far tonight. He's made six consecutive quality starts. But Kansas City has been an issue for him. He's lost three in a row to them with an ERA of 720. And that's always in your brain. There's no doubt about it. I, you could be rolling right along, throwing the ball good, but you know I don't pitch that well against this club. Overall, a career record of eight and six. He's faced this club a lot, being in the Central Division most of his career, obviously. 2 2. Jammed him again. Good pitch there. You see the sinker? You want that sinker in. You want him to roll over it, but it kind of eats him up inside and he fouls it off. They'd love a ground ball right at somebody here with one away. 
That one more toward the hole. Pedroia dives. It's off the glove. It rolls to Mookie Betts. And into second base and stopping there is Perez. And Cuthbert has not made solid contact, but he's two for two. Those were two ugly hits. I thought the first one was ugly. Hit the third base bag. You see him get a sinker again. He just kind of chops at it. I thought Pedroia was going to get to it in the dive. You get used to Pedroia getting to everything, but just nicks his glove, goes in the right field. So trouble for Porcello first and second for Omar Infante who has hit him very well in their career battles. Former Detroit Tiger teammates so he knows him pretty good. Six out of 13 against Porcello. In for strike one. Perez at second Cuthbert on at first two to one Kansas City here in the bottom of the fourth inning into the dirt stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Plain Ridge Park Casino TC Jim Rice Steve Lyons will preview tomorrow's day night doubleheader plus highlights from around the American League East. You know you watch Vasquez and Porcello they've gotten along well right he's pitched well to him. But they sh he shakes a lot. He's got what he wants to do, and he's going to do it. You've been surprised tonight at some of the pitch selection. Yes, the changeups. You know, the three-two changeup to Escobar. He did put it in play. He hit it hard, foul. He's falling behind Infante with two men on. He says yes to this one. And the 2 1. Got him chasing on a pitch, a ball in the dirt, but had him set up. You know, he's thinking sinker, 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 and then breaking ball away. Fans with Benjamin Moore, you can paint like no other. Go to BenjaminMoore.com to find your nearest retailer. So far Porcello has struck out two and walked one. He's allowed a home run tonight. Here's the 2 2. Got a piece of that one. Sometimes it's that sinker right down the middle that looks like a bad pitch but they roll it over. Some of the ugliest sinkers I threw sometimes turned into double play balls and I said oh nice pitch I guess <laughs> you know. You like the result. Yes it's all about results. Shaking something off there. 2 2. Line drive, base hit. Here comes Perez rounding third base. Throwing to third base. The tag will not be applied, and the run is in the score to make it 3 to 1. And Fonte with an RBI. Jackie probably should have ate that ball in center field. But the the bad pitch to Infante trying to throw him a sinker he throws it right down the middle no sink on that ball right back up the middle he stung that ball in the center field Jackie thinks he's got a shot after he fumbles it he should have never tried to throw this ball to third base the runner moves up doesn't keep the double play in order so it will be an error base hit and an error uh, Jackie Bradley and Infante all the way down to second. So that's three consecutive hits off of Porcello here. You know the funny thing is Jackie Bradley everybody knows he could be a Golden Glove center fielder. He's made three errors in the last what last week. That's about the only thing he's done wrong. Missed a fly ball once dropped it right. Well this has a chance to turn into a very big inning for the Kansas City Royals. Here comes Orlando. Who has already ripped a triple and come on in to score. The infield has to come in for the Red Sox. Second and third with one down. And against Porcello, they are finding holes. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Boy, he needs a punch out right here. 
you you do not really want to put it put a ball in play. Cuthbert at third base and Fonte at second. Three to one, Kansas City. Fouled off. Good back pitch. behind the plate. Run something hard in there. You got two strikes. You, that punch out pitch is obviously the breaking ball. You don't want to get cute with that high cheese. I think we're having difficulty tonight is the finishing pitch. Yes. He's got him in a hole here on two. You got to throw a breaking ball. He did hard hit for a base hit. Cuthbert is in to score, and Fonte right behind him. That's a two-run single that makes it five to one. Orlando was thinking breaking ball too. It was like a, a curveball. It wasn't the hard slider. It was a weird pitch again. You're looking for a punch out pitch, something down and away in the dirt, and you see this pitch kind of rolls as a curveball. I was thinking slider biter down the dirt and. Orlando was looking for a breaking ball and infield in it's an easy way to get a two RBIs on a base hit. It's a season high five runs allowed by Porcello you picked up on this pretty much right away that he just wasn't nearly as crisp and as fine as he has been. And they are hitting him tonight. That is four consecutive hits. Barrel on the phone and back in safely Orlando. But like you said he just can't finish him off he couldn't finish finish Infante off threw him a high fastball bad pitch. Escobar 0 for 2 still only one out in the inning and three runs in to make it five to one. The runner goes and it's not fouled back to the netting. But you think about the inning started with two seeing eyeball seeing ground balls right in the hole. Perez didn't really sting that ball and now obviously Cuthbert didn't hit it hard at all in the hole between first and second but doesn't go your way sometimes. And that's Matt Barnes now loosening in the bullpen behind the right field fence. And the 0 1 pitch in tight. Porcello just trying to get out of the fourth inning suddenly. That's hard hit. There's Betts near the line. He makes a nice play in fair territory. I guess a lot of right fielders that one falls in. I'll tell you what they got him played the right way and they know that he's just trying to flick balls the other way. But that would have been trouble. If he hadn't didn't have him played down the right field line. Rick Purcello's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Right now not too pretty. Three and two thirds five earned. Walked a man as well. And he's allowed a home run to Hosmer. Two down. So the Red Sox in a fairly quick hole tonight. Here's Lorenzo Kane. He has grounded to third and flied out to right field. Hard hit. Shaw with a tremendous play behind the bag and he gets it. Otherwise, that's down the line for an extra base hit. Five to one, Kansas City. Red Sox with work to do.
The fifth inning, the Red Sox trailing by four runs, five to one Kansas City, as Vasquez will get in against Ventura. One of the hardest throwers in Major League Baseball. He'll be followed by Holt and Betts. Christian Vasquez struck out his first time up. Showing no ill effects from the Tommy John surgery at all. He foul tips that one off of Perez. The man who holds the gold glove for catchers and has been the best in the American League for some time. Kind of hard to take it away from him right now. I don't think it's going away anytime soon. The 1 1. Sox did well against Kansas City last year. It's a bit of an oddity, but they went 4 and 3 against the team that would win the World Series. Ventura's 2 1 inside. Here he's got a four run lead right now, getting kind of cute. Shook off Perez earlier in this count to throw a breaking ball, which he should have just gone after Vasquez. Now he's 3 and 1. On one hop, Escobar has it and got him. For every Red Sox hit this month, Echo Store Technologies donates $50 to the Cloud Up Fund. It's the charitable foundation of the Dropkick Murphys. Echo Star Technologies, your data center solutions provider. One away for Brock Holt, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. He's batting ninth for the first time this season. One out base is empty. Still one of the best names in all of sports I think. Brock Wyatt Holt. <laughs> Got to be from Texas with that Wyatt right. Darn right. Two or nothing. He cut his moss off though. Huh. See. Remember he had it going on last year. Big time. Right. And drops in for a strike. He is two for four against Ventura. Not much of a sample. And a routine ground ball gobble up by Infante. Two up, two down. This guy's got that burning two seam fastball, 95 miles an hour. Mentioned his hero as a boy was Pedro Martinez, the man he idolized. Like Pedro, he has that reputation for being an emotional guy, fearless guy. He weighed 128 pounds when they signed him. Several years later, at about 60 pounds more, he threw a pitch in September that registered 102 miles an hour. Because if his sinker's 95, and if he cross seams it, you have no telling how hard he throws. Well, they call him Little Pedro. That one's on the corner for a strike against Mookie, and quickly 0 and 2. Valdi's probably number one. I would think the guy with New York bounced up there. Mookie has a hit, a single. He's one for two tonight. He's now three for eight against Ventura. Nobody in this Red Sox lineup has ever homered against this right hander. They've only faced him twice probably. And that's on the corner. According to home plate up Bill Miller it's been a sizable plate. One two three they go. Five to one Royals.
Lexus has developed the Lexus Strikeout Hunger Program in partnership with Nesson and the Greater Boston Food Bank. Visit your Boston area Lexus dealer in May and donate non-perishable food items. For more information, visit Nesson.com slash Lexus. Last half of the fifth inning, Kansas City already in front here, five to one. Push back about 24 hours, game number one of the series after last night was rained out. Eric Hosmer's blasted a long home run. He's also taken ball four. This is how they went ahead. Fastball middle, and you see how he just lifts and launches this ball. I thought it was going to go way out. Didn't go that far out, but it's hard to hit a ball out of this ballpark right in that area. It's still over 400 feet. That was his seventh home run of the season. And again, now he is 10 for 27 off Porcello with four home runs. Last year he hit 297 with 18 of them, drove in 93 runs. And won a gold glove for the third year in a row. The son of a firefighter from South Florida. His mom defected from Cuba to escape the regime of Fidel Castro. Osmer and Red Sox minor leaguer Devin Marrero played little league ball together and high school ball together. He's going to make a lot of money in this game. He has been their top offensive performer this season. Here comes the 3 2. And it's inside. He's now reached base three times. His second walk. Time now for our Dunkin' Donuts poll question. Do you like day night doubleheaders? Text one for yes, two for no. Got one coming up tomorrow here. Text your answer to 536536. Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. We have no choice in the matter. We're going to be here tomorrow, and the Red Sox and Royals don't have any. When I was a kid, I liked double headers because they were, you get two of them, you'd have to pay for two of them, right? Everybody loved double headers then. Morales takes a strike. This is a new phenomenon, though, for the folks here in Kansas City. You know, the split double header because in the past they didn't have the crowds to do it, to have two separate admissions. So they would just only charge you once. That's right, but. Tomorrow is a different story because there's such great interest in the defending world champs here. They've become incredibly popular. You can't lose that gate this day and age, kidding me? Get about 34,000 fans per game. Morales has gone 0 for 2. Has a runner at first base. Nobody out. 5 1 Royals in the fifth inning. Rough start for Porcello. Game one tomorrow afternoon will be Stephen Wright. Game two is David Price. Price certainly seemed to make the mechanical adjustment he needed to make with that leg lift and where his hands were. And he touched 96 last time. Boy, up. that didn't take long to make an adjustment. I mean, my goodness. Bounced up there and stopped by Vasquez. Once again, Vasquez makes this look easy. That ball is way out in front of the plate. Curve ball keeps it in front of him. Routine for him. Morales has not been having a good year at all after a terrific season last year. Saw him drive in 106 runs. He's been cold. And he's late on that. <laughs> Gordon on deck. The Red Sox struck first tonight with a run in the second inning, but the Royals got two in the third, three in the fourth against Porcello. And now another base runner. Here's the one two. And down into the dirt. Another stop by Vasquez. You know, it's so scary as a pitcher, you got him. One and two before that pitch, they're playing them to pull. It's like so you can't throw him a sinker down and away. I mean, it sort of takes that pitch away. 
Nobody cuts their swings down anymore. 2-2 two -two hammered toward left. Holt racing to the line and makes the play in fair territory. That'll chase Hosmer back to first base. One man gone. Tonight after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports today we have reaction from the NBA draft lottery results and preview the Red Sox doubleheader against the Royals. Nesson Sports today presented by People's United Bank see what know how can do. So one away and Alex Gordon to climb in. Oh for two in this one. He's coming off a chilly road trip on which he went four for 26. He takes ball one. Royals with an 18 and 19 record. It's the latest they have been below 500 since July 14th of 2014. And Yost has been answering a lot of questions about their performance. You know you see Ned Yost down there the kind of success he's had obviously in the World Series back to back but it wasn't that long ago that he was getting hooted on big time here the way he managed his club and that seat was hot wasn't it turned it around with back to back trips to the World Series but that'll do it found his way out of Milwaukee right there late in that season fouled away. Well, they handed out hundreds and hundreds of World Series rings when they got them this season. And the word was they spent something like nine million dollars on World Series rings like everybody in the organization got one. Good for them. Much like what the Red Sox did in 04. One two pitch. Popped him up drifting foul on third base but no play it's off into the seats. And it had been a long time coming. This team never really did scare you. You know, it didn't really scare you. They scared you when they had a lead in the sixth inning, is what they did. But those guys in the bullpen, that's a little different this year. One, two. Snap toss to first base, but not in time to get Hosmer. So to count two and two on Gordon. See Vasquez loves to do this back pick. Wasn't close to being off. Hosmer doesn't get a very big lead anyway. Two and two on Gordon who's one of the great outfielders in baseball. He's won the gold glove four times. Change up. And popped him up. Skied into right. Mookie Betts creeping in. Two down. Salvador Perez will be next. He's got one for two with a base hit and has scored a run. It's a little bit odd. I wonder how you feel about this, Zach. Perez admits to spraying women's perfume on before a game. Heard you say that. He says he prefers Victoria's Secret 212 VIP. And he said, Look, we're hot and sweaty back there. I mean, I, I stink. I mean, but why do you have to have the, the women's perfume? I, I don't get it. That's his preference. He says umpires will often comment on it, say, You smell terrific. Well, you don't want to stink, and you don't want to stink too good either, right? Like sometimes guys put too much on it, whatever. Women, oh, yeah. It's like, Ooh. But they do stink because they get sweaty. It's nasty. Like, it's, he says you know, he hockey wears, gear. You know, it's he, nasty. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, one pitch down low. It's women's perfume he puts. On. He says, you know, when when the game's over and he showers up and everything, he puts on his <laughs> his guys' stuff. You, you know. better get that stuff off, huh? He said the the umpires they're waiting to see what he's wearing today. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> One ball and one strike. And Hosmer on at first base. Is that his trickle foul? Well, he used to paint his nails too, didn't he? You know, I. <laughs> you know, they do, and I think he does. Yeah.
the purpose for everything. Right. I mean, you know, you paint your nails so the pitcher can see. Of the many things catchers have to do. The one two pitch to Salvador swung on and foul tipped into the mid for strike three one man left. It remains 5 1 Kansas City as we go to the sixth. By T Mobile, Major League leaders in team batting average. Well, the Red Sox are number one at 298, 20 points better than the Colorado Rockies, who they will see on the upcoming homestand, along with the Cleveland Indians. They need that offense to come to life here against Ventura as we go to the sixth inning. Trailing five to one, Pedroia is 0 for 2. He has struck out looking and he's bounced into a double play. So far, only five hits against Ventura. We came on the year talking about your Donna Ventura and his command issues with all the walks 28 walks and 37 innings coming in and he hasn't walked anybody in this one. He really only had one batter three and one Vasquez that's about it. Red Sox getting their third look at him we'll see if that makes any difference Pedroia Bogarts Ortiz in the sixth. A little bit high there at 97. Tried to bring it right there once again. You know he's he's good at 94, 95 two seamer. He tries to jump on that cross seamer, gets away from him. Keeps shaking off the breaking ball. Wants another fastball. And he missed with that as well at 96. Bogarts to hit next. The 3 1. Oof. Pedroia attacked that. Another fastball. Pedroia is trying to kill this ball and it's by him. This ball's got some hair on it. 96. Two seamer balls running. Look at him take a rip at that ball. Popped up foul out of play. The Red Sox have homered in 16 consecutive games. That's the second longest run in franchise history. Behind the 1996 Red Sox, who homered in 19 in a row. You wonder what's wrong there. He took a while to get back on the mound. You saw Perez take his mask off, thinking there's something wrong with his arm or his arm. Well, nobody coming out from their dugout. 
shot into left field for a base hit. The Dustin Pedroia leads off the sixth inning with a solid single. You throw him three fastballs in a row, he's going to get to one of them. And he did. Three two fastball up, gets on top of it. You can't throw a ball up high enough, he can't get on top of. But you'll see that foul ball before. That's when he was shaking his arm out there, Ventura. And brings up Xander Bogarts, who has popped up and grounded out. He has hit safely in 22 of his last 24 as he takes high ball one. Xander with a 10 game hitting streak. He came into the game tonight leading the American League in hits. Two and oh and now Perez would like a mound visit. Two and oh is the count where they always visit right. Yeah I hated that. I used to hate the, you know two and oh you got to come out and give me the ball. Talk to me. Misfire a couple times big deal. Stay back there. You'll be all right. <laughs> Fisk used to do that all the time. A lot did of he? guys. Yeah. Pudge did. Yeah. And he takes forever to get out there. It's not like he's running out there. 2 0 right down. When they got to the mound on 2 0, what was that conversation like? What, what was the first thing the catcher would say to you? I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was there. Here we go. Just to change lanes. They do that a lot. You know, when the pitching coach comes out a lot, he's just there to. to, to Change the pace. Popped him up. Right over the center of the diamond is Infante. And Bogarts is now 0 for 3. So you just tuned him out. You know, you didn't want to hear anything. I mean, I didn't. He didn't think I wasn't listening, you know. But, you know, it gets old after a while, you know. And, and they're trying to do you a favor because they think you're, you're out of sync. So they're there for a reason. But get out here quick, you know. Run out there. Run out there. You remember how Pudge you take his oh, mask yeah. off? I mean, everybody knows that's Pudge. Yeah. Mask off, strolling out there <laughs> to kill me. His big poppy taking up high for a ball. Hey, on the topic of pace of play, games are going about another seven minutes longer than last year, and the commissioner is concerned about it. Wants to see it go the other direction. And it's not about the replays like you said right it has nothing to do with that even though there's more replays this year. Yeah he doesn't think so. Ortiz pops that one up the catcher Perez heading back toward the netting and has room to make the catch. And David is 0 for 3. Well he had just enough room to get to this. Makes it look easy. Luke Hochaver working in their bullpen. You may be onto something I'm telling here. Telling you that because something's up with that arm. Yeah, Perez told the dugout, you know, keep an eye on this guy. You're talking about a guy they consider their number one, and he has a 5-1 lead. And it's only the sixth inning. He has not thrown a ton of pitches. No, but it's that one pitch that he threw that that uh, Pedroia fouled off, and he took a while to get back on the mound. Here's Hanley Ramirez. He has struck out in single. Red Sox trailing by four. Hanley has run his hitting streak to eight in a row, and that one inside hit him. Got him on the elbow. And so Hanley will take first base, but right down to second. And that's a major misfire right there. You know he's not trying to come that far inside. Look at this ball supposed to be down and away. Look at this pitch. Oh, excuse me. We're back to the Pedroia foul ball. Watch him. Look at the body language there. I mean, what are you doing? Then he sort of shakes it. He gets the ball back and then he stretches his arm out a little bit. See? He's going to stretch his little. Come on. There we go. And Perez is now on the mound again. Another visit. Yeah, and then see, he pointed to the dugout saying, keep a look out on this guy. And it's been a while, a couple of hitters later. But he's done after this inning anyway. There's no way I think he goes seven. He's feeling anything at all. Well, he's not been able to get Travis Shaw tonight. Travis has singled twice off him. And a breaking ball sinks in there for a strike. Starting him out with a curveball. 
So Travis two for two has two men on. Pedroia and Ramirez. There's a high fly ball. That's deep to right field. Orlando back to the wall and leaps up and it is out of here. Travis Shaw, perfect night going, and he powers the Red Sox right back into the game with a three run homer. Well, I had three, a three run home run all over my mind right there. Get back into this game. Number six for Travis, and that makes it five to four. I don't know what Ventura is feeling, but this is a fastball he's trying to get in. He throws it middle, got some hair on its ball. You don't know if it's got a chance here in Kansas City, but he got it. You saw Orlando go back to the wall, and he runs out of room. Three run Johnson. Thank you. That brings up Jackie Bradley, who chops a foul. He has already doubled and grounded out in this one. Speedway proud to be New England's first choice for value and convenience for every Red Sox homer. Speedway donates $500 to Boston Children's Hospital. Stop by a Speedway store near you and pick up your Speedway rewards card and start earning points today. Red Sox have now homered in 17 consecutive games. Something about this team, I'll tell you what, I mean, they get behind, they claw back in, one swing of the bat. The 1 1 is inside. Remember, the Sox came back from five down to beat Toronto real early. It kind of established that personality. It was on April 8th. They trailed 7 to 2 after five innings and they wound up winning the game 8 to 7. That was that Joe Kelly game that he did pitch real well. That's right. And Brock Holt with a grand slam. Right. That bullet down the line. Boy, a different Ventura in this inning. Boy, I tell you what, that's a big swing of the bat right there. Three for three. Hitting the ball all over the ballpark. Slice it to left, go bridge to right. 2 2 made Jackie dance a bit there. Now, three balls, two strikes. But a hit batsman was a key moment, drilling Hanley Ramirez because there were two out at that time. That got the inning to Travis Shaw. And that bounces up there, and he winds up walking him. I don't know if he's going to make it through this inning. I mean, 3 2, you know, two hooks in a row in the dirt, no chance. Well, here comes Yost. Yeah, he's gone. Boy, that fell apart in a hurry, and the Red Sox jumped on him. So Ventura came in to this sixth inning, sitting pretty with a 5 to 1 lead. And now let's see if he makes a move here. Ho Shaver's had a half an hour to warm up. He's got to be ready. Yeah, he's going to bring him in. Have the key call to the bullpen. So their starter gives it up in this inning, and the Red Sox are right back in it now. Five four in the sixth, and we'll have more in a moment.
Colin Nesson, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. Red Sox powering their way back in it, now trailing by one after the three run homer by Travis Shaw, his sixth of the year. He is three for three in this one. Luke Hochaver coming into this one. Out of their bullpen, a fine bullpen, of course, and he has stranded 16 of his 17 inherited runners. He'll face Christian Vasquez, who has struck out and grounded out to short. Jackie Bradley just took ball four, so the Red Sox have the tying run on in the top of the sixth inning. Hoshaver did such a great job for them in postseason. One of many guys out of that bullpen that did the job. Former number one pick, number one one pick. Never really panned out as a starting pitcher, but he's got something going on now out of the bullpen. And a long, long wait there, and Vasquez asks for time and gets it. Christian went five for 14 on the just completed homestand. Well, they think Jackie Bradley can fly. He's holding for the longest time trying to make him stop. Runner holds. It's hit up the middle. Escobar with the play and gets him to retire the side. But the Red Sox are in the contest now. 5-4 Kansas City in the sixth. The Red Sox have now hit 33 homers their last 21 games, the most in the majors in that span. Also 17 straight they have homered in, the second longest in the majors. Twisted tea, the hard iced tea, that tastes like real iced tea, be a little twisted. On at the bottom of the sixth inning, Dennis Eckersley, Dave O'Brien, and Garen Austin with you from Kansas City. 5-4, the Royals have the lead, and Porcello Eck needs a shutdown. Oh, does inning. he ever. Took the words out of my mouth. It's the biggest shutdown inning of the game right here. Barnes continuing to throw in the pen. And this part of the batting order has given him fits tonight. Cuthbert, Infante, and Orlando, that is seven, eight, and nine, and they have five hits combined, including a triple. And he falls behind three and one. Kind of aim that ball right there. Three and one. He can't afford to walk here. Obviously he has not been at his best tonight. Here's the three one. Pop foul back out of play. 
If you're just joining us, Travis Shaw lifting a three run homer out of the ballpark. And the Red Sox are trailing by just one, a 3 2. And dribble foul. We've talked about Travis spending hours and hours with his dad, Jeff, in Major League Clubhouses, Cincinnati, Los Angeles, Chicago. That wasn't goof around time for him. That's, that goes a long way, don't you think, for a kid being around? You know, it's not a big deal. To be, I mean, it's a big deal to be in the big leagues, but he's not overwhelmed by any means. Uh oh. Line shot, left center, well hit. Holt will not get it onto the warning track. It short hops up into the wall. Cuthbert into second base, and he'll put on the brakes as the throw comes in. And he's three for three tonight against Porcello. Who is this guy? If I'm pitching, who is this guy? He had to throw a strike right there. Three and two. He can't walk him. A little sinker he throws right down the middle. And he gets a good, puts a good swing on this ball. I didn't think, I thought it was going to the gap, but I didn't think it was going to hit the wall. A little short hop, left center field wall, easy double. And that's it for Purcello, obviously. And John Farrell is going to make a move right now. He has seen enough for Rick Porcello tonight. Obviously, his worst outing by a lot. Time for a game break right now, brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox, and here's TC. since his return from the disabled list in August of last year did not go six innings. We take a look at these rocket arms presented by Quicken Loans bullpen ERA leaders the Red Sox on that list in the American League at three point one seven and needing to hold again. You know, Matt Barnes on the mound he's been done a pretty good job for him last time out though his buddy took him deep Springer so he wants to forget about that but he's done a nice job for the Red Sox. Multiple innings many times. Here's Infante. Pops out along the line, drifting toward foul territory, and no play for Betts. And Barnes allowing that tie breaking two run homer to Springer with two out in the sixth inning. Occasionally, it has been the timing of the hits that has really been troublesome for Barnes. Some of them have really hurt, like that one the other night. Infante has struck out. He's also singled in a run. 5-4 Kansas City here in the sixth inning. Nobody out of man at second. You know, Matt Barnes, you know, he's been obviously a starting pitcher for the Red Sox down. Got a couple of chances in the big leagues and down the minor leagues, but now it's strictly how the bullpen. He's got four pitches though. But he needs to go condense them down to two. He's got good gas, 96 regular. 
1 1 to Infante. Line into center. Here comes Jackie. He'll make the catch. Back to second base goes Cuthbert. One away. Not a very good breaking ball right there. Infante hits it solid to center field. Well, the nine spot has been big trouble tonight. It certainly was against Porcello. Orlando with a triple and a two run single. Just wasn't himself tonight. I, you know, control was not there. Not that he walked a lot of guys. It's just he was off. He couldn't put guys away. And walked two. Did allow a home run to Hosmer. But it was the bottom part of the order that ate him alive. I think that was a big at bat by Infante when he got that base hit to center. Back in the fourth inning. And they had to play the infield in, and that's why Orlando got the base hit that scored two. One man out, a man at second, and Cuthbert indicating a bunt, taking a ball. You see Orlando's at bats against Porcello. Got the ball up, shot the gap. For a triple his first time up and it scored. And then the breaking ball with the infield in gets two RBIs. Didn't exactly crush that ball, but that's what happens when you play the infield in. Here's the 1 0 from Barnes. Big time jam job there in on the knuckles. We oh, got him in the thumbs. There's some gas coming in there, fighting it off. The ball would have hit him in the stomach if he didn't hit it. A double header tomorrow, game one at 215, game two at 815. Stephen Wright goes in game one. David Price in the nightcap. The one one. Looked like he went, they appeal, and he did. Swing and a miss makes it one and two. Boy, he flinched after his gas. Couldn't hold up. Tommy Lane working in the pen. Gonna put him away right here. Cuthbert edging off second. The one two pitch and he bounced it and with a breaking ball and no play although Vasquez thought about gunning down there to second Vasquez he's always trying to be tricky whether he's scraping the ground on the inside part of the plate and setting up outside or holding that high like he's going to throw a high fastball you see he had his glove real high like give me a high fastball knowing he was going to throw a breaking ball the trickster. I mean, I don't. I, I want. If you, I'm going to throw a curveball. I want to. I want to, the glove. I want this. And he's sitting there with the glove real high like this. I want a target where I'm going to throw my hook. Two two. Ground ball. A nice play by Ramirez. He'll go to the bag, and get the out there. Cuthbert into third base. Say hello to the DD Perks loyalty program. It's how Dunkin' Donuts shows big time appreciation to loyal fans with great offers and perks, like a free beverage when you join and another one on your birthday. Enroll today at ddperks.com or the Dunkin' Donuts mobile app. The Red Sox run on Dunkin'. Orlando makes his first out. He does advance the runner. But now there are two away for Escobar's had a quiet night at the top of their order. He's 0 for 3. He was named to the All Star team like seemingly every Royal was last summer. He did win his first gold glove at shortstop. Barnes trying to hold. A man at third. Ball one.
Red Sox have due up in the seventh inning. Brock Holt, Mookie Betts, and Dustin Pedroia. The 1 0 waved on and missed. That's a 90 mile an hour changeup. Looked like a sinker from the get go, but that's a changeup. It's a hard changeup. Don't even think about throwing that hook. Two and one. Just a handful of strikeouts by the Red Sox pitching staff so far tonight, just three. It's a staff that's leading the majors in strikeouts per nine. And a little better than nine per game. Two balls, one strike on Escobar. A man at third. Boy, you got to trust that he's going to block that hook, the guy on third. It's a little short hop. It's an easy block right there. It's closer to him, but. Boy, I had a hard time just burying breaking balls with a guy on third base. Cuthbert started the inning with a double. He's advanced 90 feet. Now it's three and one on Escobar. He fires in a fastball. High up on the strike zone at 98. That ball almost rose out of the strike zone. You see it upstairs like that. It had some hair on it. 98. Boy, this kid throws hard, Barnes. Will he see another fastball? Here's the 3 2 to Escobar. He did get the heat again right, right down, down the middle. The middle. Well, he doesn't want to hang that hook either. No, not after what happened with Springer. Boy, if I'm throwing 98, I'm throwing 98 regular. Just try to dot him somewhere. But these guys don't strike out. They put the bat on the ball. What do we got here? Yeah, fastball away. Bring it. Lorenzo Kane on deck. Here's the 3 2 pitch. And he missed with it at 99, but he walked him. So they'll be on the corners for the Royals, and Kane will bat. He is 0 for 3. Marcello wanted that. He wanted that from all the way in the dugout. Bill Miller said no. Well, have you downloaded the Sox season schedule into your favorite calendar program yet? Well, visit Nesson.com slash schedule and download today. Kansas City ahead 5-4 here in the sixth inning. They have runners at first and third for Kane. He has twice grounded to third. He's also flied to right field. Very quick bat. And he runs very well. Hosmer on deck. Swung at a pitch in the dirt. The runner will go first to second as Vasquez picks it up on the wild pitch. Once again, that hook in the dirt. Nice block. Keep it in front of him. He did go to second base, but important guy is still at third. That was way out in front of the plate. Not an easy block. He's so afraid to hang that breaking ball, he's just spiking it before the plate. So now two men in scoring position for Kansas City. If I'm a hitter, I'm thinking there's no way he's throwing breaking balls. Kane swinging a hot bat with a nine game hitting streak. And the 0 1. There's the breaking ball. Top the Bogarts. And in time to get him. So Barnes does his job. He gets out of the inning. 
and strands two men. Sox coming up down one. Great. We've got a doubleheader coming up tomorrow. We asked the simple question, do you like day night doubleheaders? And let's check what you said. And 58% uh, of you like them and 42 say you do not. The day nighters and the twin bill coming up tomorrow between these two clubs. Stephen Wright and David Price will be on the mound for the Red Sox against Ian Kennedy and Edinson Volquez. Brock Holt leading off the seventh inning. Red Sox are down a run. Five to four. Brock has struck out and rolled the second. And Hochaver fires in a strike. Mookie bets on deck and then Dustin Pedroia. So plenty of speed. Fouled at the plate. Brock in a bit of a slide right now. Trying to get that stroke back after a three for 19 homestand. Red Sox got the leadoff man on last inning, and that led to three runs when Dustin Pedroia singled. And that's inside. Hoshaver has an assortment of pitches as we know because he was the starting pitcher like a lot of guys nowadays that went to the bullpen. Is 2 2. Little cutter there it throws 95 his fastball. We talked about. Hoshaver being the number one overall pick that that, that draft was a special draft 2006. Some of the guys on that list that he went ahead of Longoria, Andrew Miller, Kershaw. Breaking ball hammered right to the second baseman in Fonte. And Brock Holt is over three. Tomorrow at one, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. TC, Jim Rice, Steve Lyons will preview the starts tomorrow for Stephen Wright and David Price. One away from Mookie Betts. Mookie's got one for three, a base hit in the third inning. He's also lined out to first and struck out. Mookie with at least one hit and one run in six consecutive games.
comes out of a family full of excellent athletes. His uncle Terry Shumpert played for the Red Sox during a 14 year major league career and his cousin George Wilson was a nine year NFL safety. And now John Farrell upset about what. He's been thrown out of the game. What in the world is he upset about. Well he's upset at Bill Miller for the strike zone tonight. But out of nowhere what's what the strike to hold just. When where. Strike to Mookie Betts I think Betts. triggered this. Okay, hello. So John Farrell has been run by the home plate on Bill Miller. Wow. Second game in a row, remember the Red Sox has been thrown out. Strike one to Mookie Betts, and I'm out of here. And the 0 1 pitch. That finds the corner, <laughs> according to Miller. <laughs> this is the pitch that bothered him. Fastball down and away, and that's it. That is all for the Red Sox manager tonight. Well, I thought John Farrell was in a good mood today. He was until now. Until now. Of course, he was also thrown out at Yankee Stadium along with David Ortiz. For good reason, but look at this pitch. It's low paint. It'll break a ball down a little bit. Might have caught the corner. And he went off. You know, Pedroia got you know, punched out earlier, right? First inning, he was mad. He really was. Right. Fifteenth time for John Farrell, by the way, that he has been tossed out in his career. So Tori Lavello will have the reins from here. Although the manager always weighs in from the office, occasionally from the tunnel. But he has to leave that dugout. And the 2 2. Well, that was not a called strike, but look at where it was. He didn't catch it very good, first of all, but it, you're right. It's in the same spot that he had called that down and away. I think it's clearly a ball, and the way he catches it makes it even uglier. Makes it 3 and 2. Bounding ball to the third baseman. Cuthbert will sling on and get him. Two down. That surprise you? I mean, strike one to Mookie. Boom, he's gone. Yes. Something irritated him for a long, long time. I mean, usually we're we're ahead of the game, but I I, I was caught by surprise, weren't you? Well, I thought going back to the very first inning, you mentioned the at bat by Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia was upset. Right. There have been a number of calls. We've mentioned them throughout the game that were borderline. Right. It wasn't glaring, was it? I thought that was borderline. Okay. Yeah. But you know. You, the trigger, you know, it's like woo. Pedroia in this one, a strikeout. He's hit into a double play, and he's also singled. Good numbers against Hochaver. He is six for seventeen with a homer, three fifty three. Ninety five, and in there for a strike. Five four Kansas City in the seventh. Bogarts on deck. Maybe he didn't give them that. 3 2 pitch Barnes remember the pitch 3 2 pitch 99 yep. miles an hour that might he probably wanted that have factored yep breaking ball that one a high fly into left field but not very deep and Gordon will make the play and the Red Sox will go 1 2 3 and John Farrell has been ejected one run game in Kansas City.
brought to you by Citizens Bank. Visit CitizensBank.com by your New England Ford dealers. Ford go further by Haircuttery, Smart Looks, Smart Prices, and by L.L. Bean, Discovery Gear that lasts at LLBean.com. Last half of the seventh inning, the Red Sox have lost their manager, John Farrell. He's been ejected. Tommy Lane will make an appearance now against the 3 4 and 5 part of the order, 5 4 Kansas City. But it really have been a slew of ejections lately for the Red Sox. Yeah. Kind of creeping up all of a sudden. Brock Holt the other day. Yeah, you can understand the Ortiz, you know, situation. I mean, everybody's going wild for good reason. But then the Brock thing was the quick trigger, and this was a quick trigger. He must have been chirping. It wasn't just that one moment. Line shot into left. Here comes Brock Holt. Oh, he rises up at the last second to make the play, and that's out number one. To retire Hosmer. Gavin Herrera now throwing in their bullpen, and of course it's been that bullpen that has been so successful for them over the course of the last few seasons. Yeah, especially the guy at the end, Wade Davis. Phenomenal numbers the last couple of years. Then Herrera throws a ball about a hundred. Yeah, they have a couple of those guys leading to a championship. Is Morales? He is 0 for 3. The designated hitter. He won the Silver Slugger last year, and takes a strike. Well, he's hitting a lot better from the right-hand side. That's for sure. He's only hitting 150 left-handed. That means he must be hitting over 300 right-handed. One ball, one strike. When we go to the eighth inning, the Red Sox will have the heart of the order up. Bogarts, Ortiz, Ramirez, and if anybody reaches, Travis Shaw, who's gone three for three with a three run homer. But the Sox are trailing. Game one of a three game series here, the only trip to Kansas City this year for Boston. Dining playbook is all new this Saturday at 9 a.m. Join Billy and Jenny at the intersection where sports and dining meet. Dining playbook driven by your New England Chevy dealers. High fly, shallow center. On comes Jackie Bradley, and he'll make the play. Two down. Keep up with Nessa and Red Sox this season by following us on Instagram. Check out cool images from the road. Follow us today at Instagram.com slash Nessa. Here comes Alex Gordon now hitless tonight. He's 0 for 3 with a strikeout a ground at a short and a fly to right. Bases empty two away. Red Sox trying to stay very close here to the Royals. The Red Sox were behind 5 to 1 in this game. Before the three run homer by Travis Shaw in the fourth inning. Travis Shaw said, Even as an 11 year old kid, I was working on swing mechanics when his dad would take him to the ballpark. He said, With my dad, it was business to be at the ballpark. And he said, That kind of rubbed up on me. Yeah, the kind of success his dad had. He wasn't just a regular, he was a good relief pitcher, had a couple good years there, saved over 40 games. Was Cincinnati, was it? Yep. And also played with Cleveland with John Farrell. That went all the way to the backstop. Take BP off your dad, a major league pitcher. That's you know. Yeah. You get used to swinging. It gets serious right away. Right away. Travis came into the ball game tonight, hitting 317, and he has three hits. One ball and two strikes on Gordon. Nobody aboard with two down. Check swing strike three. And now Gordon unhappy. Yeah, that's the same pitch. They go one, two, three. We go to the eighth.
is brought to you by Southwest Airlines transparency low fares nothing to hide by buyatoyota.com Toyota's website for deals by the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security use your head buckle up by the great folks at Sullivan Tire and Auto Service and by the University of Massachusetts here for a reason. Red Sox trying to win a ball game in Kansas City against their fine bullpen. Kelvin Herrera coming on for his 20th appearance. Look at that minuscule ERA under one. Well, he's been doing this for a while, last couple of years. Everybody knows about him. I mean, obviously in the World Series the last two years, just doesn't get the saves, doesn't get the credit that the last guy gets. Xander Bogarts to lead off the eighth. Red Sox are behind five to four as he waves and misses. Looking for a hundred and get a little spinner. <laughs> yeah, got 84. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking this, this is a breaking ball. It's not a cutter because it's 84. He's probably got a cutter that's 94. Xander's popped up twice and grounded out to third. And he lines that one to center field and he's on with a base hit. Give him an 11 game hitting streak. Boy, he just flicks this ball to center field. I mean, look at this swing. This is why he hits over 300 the last two years. Look at that breaking ball down almost on the ground. Just flicks the ball to center field. Can't do anything about that. Good pitch. Good hitting. He's now hit safely in 23 of his last 25 games. And he is a star. David Ortiz taking a strike. He's also had a quiet night. 0 for 3. He has yet to hit the ball out of the infield. He's trying to size him up, just saw his gas. Into the dirt and stopped by Perez. Ortiz giving him the business. Nice stop there. You think about it. Guy throws 100 and then he throws change up in the dirt. Fouled away. There's 98. That's a two seamer, too. You don't see many two seam fastballs in that velocity range. No, you don't see David be that late. One two. He's taking and that miss downstairs to make it two and two. The hits are even eight apiece. And the Sox have the leadoff man on. Here's a high fly center field. Kane backing up a bit. He's underneath. Sander Bogart staying on at first base. One man gone. Couldn't couldn't square it up. Well, have you checked out Nesson's brand new site for car enthusiasts? It's Nesson Fuel. Visit NessonFuel.com and follow Nesson Fuel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram today. So one away, and the batter will be Hanley Ramirez. He's been on base twice. With a single, and he was hit by a pitch. He was aboard when Travis Shaw cracked a three run homer in the sixth inning and got the Red Sox in the game. That was a huge part of that inning when you go back to it. Yeah, that happened with two down. First pitch just got away from him. Didn't think much of it at the time. Next thing you know, three run bomb. Koji all warmed up in the bullpen. We're in the eighth inning. Red Sox down by a run. And a foul ball right at the feet of Perez for strike one. Hanley is hit safely in eight consecutive games, and he is 14 for 29 during the hitting streak. Been a lot, a lot of different stances for him too. You know the kicks. You know, as Jerry was talking about it the other day. Sometimes he kicks, sometimes he doesn't. Nothing at two. 
didn't kick there and that was an ugly swing. Something off speed you're geared up for that gas you know you are. Oh he did step he little kick. You might see that pitch again. Bogarts at first one out Red Sox down five four in the eighth. And the 0 2. And throw over. Hello. Red Sox will be right back home at Fenway on Friday. Three game series against Cleveland and then three more on that homestand against Colorado. Gas away. Front it goes. Outside Perez throw the tag he is out. Let's see if the Red Sox challenge this play. Xander is leaving second base. I thought it was a strike on the pitch too. It may have been up. But you saw Perez get in the way of Miller the umpire to jump out of there and try to throw out Bogart. You can't really see there. I thought he got in his hand but the tag got him on the backside. That's a close play. Ball is away. Throw up the line a little bit. Tags him on the backside. Does his hand get in? Oh, he's out. I mean, a hair. The Red Sox have decided, however, that they are going to challenge this. It's close enough to challenge. I mean, it is. So they want New York to take a look. Did his hand get in before he tagged him on the back? Xander headlong. He looks out there, but that's not close enough. The other view looked closer to me. I, I do think not. He's, yeah, I, I think he's out. I don't see a, an don't angle see where he's safe. He's yeah, he's out. Going to be out. So that was the ruling. And I don't think this will take all that long. And indeed, they come right back and confirm it. That's the 12th time. That Perez, the Gold Glover, has gunned down a base stealer this season. Well, you got got, got to take a chance. I mean, Bogarts can run. I mean, bang bang. I mean, barely threw him out, but that guy is the best in the business. So the base is now empty with two down for Hanley, and the count is one and two on Ramirez. As mentioned earlier, no one's taking that gold glove from Salvador Perez anytime soon. Sweet. Waved at and missed. That was a meager swing, and down he goes, strike three. Yeah, no chance. Their bullpen is tough, and so is their catcher.
Mountain is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, and nothing to hide. On to the last half of the eighth inning here in Kansas City, Dennis Eckersley and Dave O'Brien. It is five to four, the Royals. The hits are even at eight. Here's the man who just fired a laser down to second base to get Bogarts. Salvador Perez and this one has gone one for three with a single. He got a great pitch to throw too. Fastball away. Looked like a pitch out almost. Here's the two nothing. And that misses inside. And Wade Davis their closer getting going in the bullpen. Three-zero pitch from Lane is in there for a strike. On uh, a man who has won three consecutive Gold Gloves, named to the All-Star starting team for two years in a row. And it is inside for ball four, so he begins the bottom of the eighth inning by taking a walk. You don't want to do that. I'm surprised he sent him out there for the second inning. I. Yui Hara was ready to go and is warmed up right now. You hate to see Lane give up a double here or something bad with Yui Hara warming up. Well, not coming in yet. Cuthbert, the batter, he's gone three for three. What are we waiting for? Last time up, he doubled. And dropped in there for strike one. Cuthbert, the youngster they brought up to fill in for Mustakis at third base, brought him up from Triple A. He was hitting 333 at the minor league level. Red Sox will have due up in the ninth inning. Travis Shaw, who's three for three, Jackie Bradley. Who has an RBI double and Christian Vasquez? Vasquez scheduled to bat. He's 0 for 3. I'll tell you what, it's going to take a home run to score Perez from first base. Check out his lead. I'm talking about one foot off the bag. There he goes. And it's inside. That is a lead designed to carry on a conversation. <laughs> exactly. Lane looking for the strikeout. Did he get it? Yes, he did. Home plate umpire will ring him up. Bill Miller said he went. And that is strike three. One man away. This ball looked up and out of the, out of the strike zone. He, Got him chasing this pitch way outside. It's not even close. Wouldn't you ask the first base umpire? I mean, Lexus making a pledge to strike out hunger for every strikeout by a Sox pitcher. Lexus donates fifty dollars to the Greater Boston Food Bank. Tori Lavello, who's the acting manager the rest of the night, will go to the bullpen. He'll bring on Koji right here to face Infante, and we'll be back in Kansas City in just a moment.
pitching matchup for the day-night doubleheader in Kansas City. Stephen Wright, Ian Kennedy, Game 1. David Price, Edinson Volquez for Game 2. This closer look brought to you by FW Web Selection Expertise Solutions. More at FWWeb.com. Well, Koji, now into the game. You wanted to see him a little earlier. Right. Don't really understand that. Luckily, he got the third baseman out. If he had hit a double, I would have been second guessing that. Perez on at first base with one away, and Infante the hitter. He's gone one for three with an RBI single tonight. Koji with 17 K's and 15 and a third. 5 4 Kansas City in the eighth inning. And a bunt. Koji off the hill, bobbles it. He throws it away up the line. Perez heading into third. It goes way up the line. Betts has to pick it. Here comes the run. The throw home, the tag. He's safe. He stutter stepped coming around third base. I thought they had a shot at him at the plate. I can't believe Perez scored on that. Koji should have ate it once he didn't get it cleanly. That was a beautiful bunt. The blueprint bunt right here by Infante. He gets to it, but once he fumbles it, he had no chance. He tried it, didn't really get a good grip on this ball. He's off balance, throws it away in between everybody. He gets down the line there. You look at Perez coming around third. He doesn't even think he could score. He's kind of slowed up a little bit. Headlong dive gets in. His hand gets in. That's incredible because he can't run a lick. Still running. <laughs> when he'll advise throw by Koji. That was a great bunt. To sacrifice an error on a pitcher. And Infante all the way down to third base. That's a huge run indeed to make it six to four. I was surprised they sent him to be honest with you. You know with one out. Red Sox have been sloppy lately defensively. And it really hurt there. High and tight on Orlando who has had a big night with a triple and a two run single. You remember they got that big out when Betts threw out Lowry at the plate in Chicago. You remember sacrifice yes. fly. That was a big play. One man out here. The 1 1 and high fly ball. Forget about this one way way back and gone. My goodness. He's had a night. Home run triple single. I'll tell you what those split fingers go so far. When they don't do anything. So eight to four Kansas City a disastrous eighth inning here for Koji split finger bale and whale bridge. My goodness. Now the error on the bunt. And now a mammoth home run. Traveled 408 feet. That splitter is a wonderful pitch, but when it doesn't split, it, it goes a long ways. It really does. And anybody could do can do it. Popped up by Escobar toward right field. Ramirez and Pedroya giving chase, and Hanley will make the catch. That'll be the second out. You get Soria along with Davis now working side by side, a pair of right handers in their bullpen. In front of Lorenzo Kane will bat right here. You know, Davis is already hot, but there's no more save out there, so that's why they may go to Soria if he can get loose quick enough. Now the Red Sox were down just one run moments ago, and now they're down by four. That one slammed into left on his horse Brock Holtz. He can't get it. It short hops the fence. Kane into second base with a double. Another split finger. It's like batting practice. You leave it up. He 
And Kane rips it. it Looks like a nothing fastball but it's a split finger. And by the way the home run by Orlando. If you look at the 10 game hitting streak for Kane. The first he allowed. Since the first game after last year's all star break. He allowed one to Mike Trout. Wow. That's a game winner. Big swing and a foul back. Hosmer had the same idea. He's already done it tonight back in the third inning. He belted a homer. Well, then again, he missed the last couple months of the season, right? Whatever he did. it was, six weeks. Yep. Hosmer has been on base three times. He's walked twice, along with the home run. Eight to four Kansas City in the eighth inning. And a high high pop up on the infield Xander Bogart's taking command. And that will retire the side. But the bullpen roughed up Koji in particular. Go to the ninth eight to four the Royals. Porcello with his shortest outing in a long, long time, certainly his shortest this year. Ventura went five and two thirds. Red Sox got back in the game against him, but the bottom part of that order, Orlando in particular, has been deadly against the Red Sox. Seven, eight, nine, they've done all the damage, really, with the exception of Hosmer. Soria coming out of their bullpen here as we go to the ninth inning. He makes his 20th appearance, a 4.42 ERA. Travis Shaw has had a good night with two singles and a three run homer so he's three for three. Red Sox trailing eight to four here in the ninth inning. First of three games with Kansas City. And the one one moves him back a bit they've change the scoring on the bunt by Infante instead of a sacrifice it's now a single and an error hit an error that's what I thought but that in any event run. Yeah. that home run by Orlando took the, the drama out of this game in a heartbeat it felt like it 2 one will miss downstairs Jackie Bradley on deck and then Vasquez scheduled to hit. Crowd of about 25,000 tonight in Kansas City looking on. And the 3 1. And a little looper. Foul ground. 
Cuthbert with room and leaps up. Ooh. Oh, right up against the railing, hung up on the hips, and he held on. Whoa. He had that thing all sized up, but then again, here comes that railing. He catches it, catches him right in the, the gut. Had enough time to brace himself. Had a big night with three hits in that play. Says he's all right. So one away for Jackie Bradley. Jackie is one for two tonight with a double. He had that in the second inning, his first at bat to run his hitting streak to 22 straight. And he looks at a strike. They got Soria out there. He's, he's saved over 200 games, he's been around the block. Marco Hernandez, who's just been recalled, would hit for Vasquez. The Red Sox can add another pitcher for the doubleheader tomorrow. So they get 26 players? Is that how it works? And tight, yep. Right. Twin bill beginning tomorrow afternoon at 2.15 Eastern. Stephen Wright will go in game one. David Price will go. In game two of the split doubleheader. Game two at 815. Here's the 2 1. And that drifts away. So three balls and a strike on Jackie Bradley, the American League Player of the Week. Trying to reach here in the ninth inning against the Royals. And he will down and in ball four. He's on base for the third time tonight, his second walk. Tomorrow at 1.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live presented by DCU. Hear from Sox players who visited the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum today in Kansas City. DCU is Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? And Hernandez announced as mentioned. Up there on the left side, one of the things the Red Sox like about him, big hole on the right side with Jackie Bradley getting his lead. Eight to four, Kansas City, and that's a strike. And the Red Sox needed that bullpen to keep it close, and Penn was unable to do that in the eighth inning. Royals have out hit the Red Sox 10 to 8. Many things have been going for the Red Sox. It's quite unusual to look up there on the scoreboard and see somebody out hitting them. But that is the case here in game one. Looked like it was going their way with that three run home run by Shaw. They're going to make a run at it. 1 1. Now a ball and two strikes. Red Sox have made what five errors the last two games. It's been out of character and cut on and missed for strike three, but you're right. Too sloppy. Hernandez can't get to those back to back change ups, gets punched out. And will send up Brock Holt, who's gone 0 for 3. He has struck out and grounded out twice. Both of these clubs facing a very long day tomorrow. We will have it all for you right here on Nesson. The double header, runner at first base, and Jackie Bradley not being held any longer. And that is ball one. It was a short night for Rick Porcello, five innings, five runs, eight hits. He had been pitching so effectively. Runner goes, and they're going to let him go. It's in there for a strike. Bradley down to second. 
No stolen base awarded there. Brock Holt trying to get the Red Sox a little bit closer here with two down. Mookie Betts on deck. And the 1 1. 2 and 1. Baltimore got slammed, by the way, 10 to nothing by Seattle. Ooh. They were due to get slammed. Been so hot, particularly at home. That's on the corner, according to Bill Miller. He's had a big plate all night. John Farrell certainly objected to the strike zone. He was thrown out of the game. The count two and two. And the victory here for Kansas City. They get back to 500. Little tapper. The throw to first. And got him. And that will be the ball game. Final score tonight, eight to four. This one got away in the eighth inning. Koji had a very rough eighth. Kansas City, seven, eight, nine hitters, TC, did a lot of damage. They went eight for 12 with a homer, five RBIs, and scored five times. And game one goes to Kansas City.